ਹੁਣ ਮੇਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਐਬਸਫੋਰਡ ਦੇ ਮੇਅਰ ਮੇਅਰ ਰਾਸ ਸੀਮਨਸ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਨਗੇ ਉਹ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਵਾਰ ਮੇਅਰ ਬਣੇ ਨੇ ਕਾਉਂਸਲਰ ਲੰਬਾ ਸਮਾਂ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਮੇਅਰ ਸੀਮਨਸ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਹੈ ਦਾਦੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਪਾਸਿਓਂ ਵੀ ਘੱਟੋ ਘੱਟ 70-80 ਸਾਲ ਤੋਂ ਨਾਨੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਪਾਸਿਓਂ ਬਹੁਤ ਲੰਮੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਤੋਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਸਿਟੀ ਚ ਰਹਿ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਮੇਅਰ ਸੀਮਨਸ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਕਿ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਐਬਸਫੋਰਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਕਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਕਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਪ੍ਰਾਇੋਰਟੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਮਹਿਸੂਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਾਉਂਸਲਰ ਦੇ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਐਬਸ ਐਬਸਫੋਰਡ ਦਾ ਮੇਅਰ ਬਣਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਫਰਕ ਹੈ ਮੇਅਰ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਹਾਊ ਆਰ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਗੁੱਡ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਫਾਰ ਜੁਆਇਨਿੰਗ ਅਸ ਐਂਡ ਹਾਊ ਆਰ ਯੂ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਆਮ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਵੈਲ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਯਾ ਐਂਡ 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 ਜੁਆਇਨ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਬੈਕ ਇਨ ਦੀ ਆਫਿਸ ਆਫਟਰ ਦਾ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਡੇ ਲੌਂਗ ਵੀਕਐਂਡ ਬਿਊਟੀਫੁਲ ਹਾਊ ਇਜ਼ ਐਬਸਫੋਰਡ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਐਬਸਫੋਰਡ ਇਜ਼ ਡੂਇੰਗ ਅਮੇਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਗਾਟ ਅ ਅ very um vibrant and resilient city and uh, lots of things going on here where the uh, we like to refer to ourselves as the cultural and economic hub of the Fraser Valley yeah i i was so pleased as today's international uh, uh, mother language day and uh, i was going through your website you have all the options where all languages punjabi and hindi this is this is very bright let us start with the some basic questions uh, first of all uh, i would like to know about the flood victims summers prairie what the city is doing there to in order to protect them again yes um well it's an ongoing uh, work we've um done over 300 different sites the main dike breach has been repaired we're um we've got a number of of um you know the dikes have been built up about a half a meter in in some key areas mm-hmm. we are continuing to there's still some bridges that we're working through um some of the ditches some of the repairs that need to happen there there's there's various windows for um you know fish habitat and those types of things so we have to work through the Uh, the process um with those areas but yeah it's an ongoing um uh, work and we'll continue to be vigilant on that okay uh, what was the because flood victim was telling about the dike and uh, but you know the river flowing from best south of our border from washington state in order because uh, we are living in very different world now if it comes again a pumping station and dikes and uh, what did be prepare after this you know it it was just a disaster and uh, community did very wonderful job specifically from our radio station we organized groups and uh, all the victims were coming on uh, our radio stations and the city did at your level best and provincial government also can you elaborate more what was the cause of this flood well um first of all thank you very much for for your role as well because i know getting the communication out was key and i know the um the community was amazing um uh, i you know again it almost chokes me up when i think about uh mm-hmm. how people leaned in so that was uh, amazing so thank you for your role in that um this was a one in 100 year storm mm-hmm. um so back to back atmospheric rivers with the rising temperature so what happened of course that watershed all came down the nooksack mm-hmm. um and of course we had corresponding on the um you know fraser and and vetter as well mm-hmm. so when that water started to come over the border like when it broke its banks in uh everson um south of the border then it started to fill up like an ice cube tray and of course it started to move north um and then once it the sumas flows um where the uh where the sumas basically where the floodgates will flow into the uh, vetter we had to close those floodgates because the vetter was um 
the bed or in the freezer were too high. So we had to close those floodgates for four days. That water had nowhere to go. Go. Mm. And so that started going over the dikes. Mm. And we have, um, my in-laws' dairy farm is right along where the dike broke on the main dike bridge. And so my brother-in-law was showing me uh, photos Mm. um, a a day before. It was coming over. It sounded like Niagara Falls. And, um, yeah, so that undermined the dikes. So first, you know, first and foremost, that was a, a one in 100 year storm. And we we're certainly hoping that we don't get a repeat anytime soon. Um, but yeah, that water had nowhere to go. And that's why the plan that we've developed um, or worked on, um, a part of it is um, storing water. Mm-hmm. Uh, naturally, there has to be more water storage, but primarily it has to go it has to go over that floodgate. Um, and if we would have had a pump station in there, we feel that we would have probably dodged the main flood. We would have yes. still had some flooding on the west side, but we would have moved the water through faster. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a complicated uh, process now because we're talking about, you know, the better part of a billion dollars yes. um, for just that. And then, of course, with the, the flood storage areas and, and some of the dike work, that adds another probably close to $2 billion. So we're, we're upwards of $3 billion for mm-hmm. the overall flood mitigation, and that's going to take a number of, of years to, to work through. So we are in a better place than we were yes. um, in 2021 with the dikes being higher and, and some of the you know culverts being uh, repaired and those types of things. So, But, yeah, we've got some challenges ahead. Please keep us in loop when we are lobbying to provincial government or federal government because... The billions of dollars is beyond year, beyond city's reach, and we will be there with shoulder to shoulder. And uh, we wanted to keep our these farmers safe. It's not only the Sikh community, all community, the pig farmers and um, poultry farmers, as you were telling, dairy farmers. So all should be safe. The next uh, uh, point is. For truck parking, I know um, you don't have much land. 70% of land surrounding to your beautiful city is all agricultural land. That's about the beauty of your city. And uh, so for the truck parking, what is going on? Um, well, yeah, trucking, again, is an essential part um, of our economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, provincially, uh, I think we need to elevate this um, this issue uh, because our provincial and, dare say, our, our international economy, because everything that comes in through the port of Vancouver, mm-hmm. everything that goes across the borders, and the majority of what's going west or um, east of us mm-hmm. all requires trucking. And the aggregates and all the farm um, products and everything that goes to market in Vancouver, mm-hmm. um, including the aggregates that are coming out of the Fraser Valley, primarily yes. Abbotsford and the and you know on the North Shore, mm-hmm. um, in in the Mission area, mm-hmm. that all is what is being used in Vancouver to build their infrastructure. Mm-hmm. So when the Ministry of Transportation um, widens the freeway through the valley, we have a number of of ministry owned lands that we are advocating and working with them. On, um, so that they can elevate the park trucking, um, the truck parking, mm-hmm. um, to the uh, to that level of of, of importance for our um, industries, mm-hmm. because everybody takes a look at jobs and they take a look at the food that's at the supermarkets. But how do they think that that all gets there? Mm-hmm. And and those jobs, um, I would say, a huge majority of what we consume on a daily basis uh, requires trucks and mm-hmm. and where they park i mean those are independent owners mm-hmm. sometimes we have like the the large trucking companies yes. um but oftentimes you have independent owners um that have nowhere to park those um mm-hmm. and so we need to resolve that issue and um and i think there's some key areas along the freeways um along Fraser Highway yes. i think that there's some yeah so we are looking at um Doing a, we have a, a, a task force. Um, I'm not sure if we, if it's going to be a committee or, but we are going to uh, be taking a look at that issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, again, it's going to be regional. I know Chilliwack Langley has the same challenges. Surrey yes. does as well. Yes. And I think we have to look at it regionally. But it has to be that level of importance. Yes. Yeah. You know. Uh 
in for the parking you have to rezone pretty uh, that area and industrial zone and uh, uh, there is big farmer community who are in trucking business uh, can they park their truck their own truck one or two in their farmhouse uh, right now we uh, do allow up to, uh, the agricultural land commission rules mm-hmm. allow up to two okay um and yeah, so the the challenge that we have there again is that we are working with the land commission. Um, so there's sort of different layers, and um, you know we we have an industrial land shortage as well. And um, you know we've come up with a comprehensive understanding. We want to grow Gloucester West um, mm-hmm. from um, our east from Langley, two sixty fourth, and then we want to we also have some lands. Uh, we would call them study area A, and then study area B is at the airport where it would go north from mm-hmm. the airport to Pierdenville. Um, and the land commission has turned us down twice on that. And again, it was a comprehensive, you know, for the infrastructure, everything that would make logistical sense for um, rail and, and uh, road and airport. And um, they, their response was that our industrial land shortage isn't their responsibility Mm. Uh, and our response to the federal or to the provincial government if it's not the land commission's responsibility it's somebody's responsibility Mm. um, that we need to work with so i think they get the message i know dr lenora newman has also done um, a lot of work on the on the um the task force for uh, food security Mm. and uh, a lot of that plays into um you know the whole supply chain and and where some of that um where some of that will occur. And I think even that report has indicated that food processing, the trucking, um, all, making all of the components, um, you know, whether it's robotics or conveyor belts or everything that you need for the whole supply chain for um, harvesting and processing, that all has to happen somewhere. That's an industrial use. And so we need some assistance on that. Mayor, in order for a good infrastructure, because we don't have much land left uh, in, in Surrey, and only Fraser Valley we have in Greater Vancouver uh, area, and uh, in order to get our commute uh, smoothly there, what do you have uh, in mind? The, you know, uh, this Trans-Canada one is totally clogged if we get put another another lane there. Is there any rapid transit or uh, SkyTrain sort of uh, idea you have in mind from Surrey towards or from Langley towards Eversport? Well, yeah, the freeway widening is is key. And Mm -hmm. again, I would advocate for four lanes in both directions. And Mm -hmm. um, but that's a that's an ongoing challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, I know uh, SkyTrain is scheduled to come into Langley down Fraser Highway. Yes, um, and so we think a bus connection uh, down Fraser Highway, um, a rapid bus connection into High Street and to uh, Abbotsford Airport would be a key component that we would definitely be looking at when that happens. Uh, right now, we have the Fraser Valley Express, which mm-hmm. we um, the city is involved with that through the. Um, through the regional district, and that goes from Chilliwack. It has a couple of stops. We're looking at doing another stop at Whatcom eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that goes right through um, stops at McCallum and at um, High Street, mm-hmm. and then it goes directly to Carvolt in Langley, and then it, the, the western terminus is at the Low Heat Station. Mm-hmm. So it connects already to SkyTrain. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, we've had great uptake on that. Uh, so Fraser Valley Express, as, again, as the freeway widens, uh, we're hoping that um, sooner as opposed to later. Like, mm-hmm. I think they're giving us a five-year time frame. Mm-hmm. And so the car parks and the truck parking, um, and the car parks would be for, again, um, you know, Getting onto the uh, Fraser Valley Express, we also have the the connection from Abbotsford um, directly to the North Shore. Yes, um, and at the eastern terminus for the uh, West Coast Express is, is Mission. So um, we've got some options already. And then what we're trying to do is densify from the core out, and that's why the industrial land. Um, issue is so important to Abbotsford as well because those provide jobs. 63 to 64% of our population that lives here works here. Mm-hmm. And um, and a, a number of those that commute, um, I would say it's probably 
a, a good number of those go to Chilliwack um, and um, Langley and Surrey. So um, we, we want to make sure that we are providing jobs for the housing that's coming here, and we'd love to continue. I, I would love to see it up to 75% of the people that live here work here, but uh, that's, a, that's a lofty goal. But um, I think it, you know, that also... Uh, takes down on the commute times, it gives people more time with their families, it, it does environmental improvements yes. because you don't have people wasting time and, and uh, resources um, unnecessarily getting to work. So. Yes. Another relevant question to this, uh, you are chairperson of uh, Airport Authority. Uh, everyone wants to fly out from Aversford because parking is so cheap if you're going for any um, domestic flight coming after three days, you are paying about $15. You are ready to go. And so nice, very cozy airport. Any planning for expansion of that? We are waiting for that day that we will fly from here to New Delhi or any European connection. Expansion of airport. Speak our language. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, you are planning on that. Yeah, so the it's 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 Canada's actually I think fastest growing airport or mm-hmm. one of the fastest growing in North America, and it's I think Abbotsford is the only one classified as an ultra low cost airport in yes. Canada. It's an amazing. Um, um, Parm Sidhu, that is our airport general manager, is a uh, is kind of a local rock star in that regard. Yes, um, he has um, done a great job. And, um, yeah, so our goal, again, there's lots of variables, and so much is dependent on the airline industry. Mm-hmm. And um, so there's there's federal regulations, there's all sorts of politics that go on with different airports and, and routes and things like that. But um, we are um, over a million passengers, I think, uh, predicting upwards of a million and a half coming up in the, the, if all goes well in the year ahead. Um, so we've recovered nicely from, from COVID. Um, and don't quote me on those numbers. Um, Parm will be the person to be able to give you those yes. numbers. But I think we got very close to a million in our first year back from uh, a full year back. Mm-hmm. So we were uh, very impressed with that. Yeah, so we'll continue to work with the, the with the airlines. I mean, we do have some direct flights um, that already go south um, yeah. into some sunspots. Yeah. So a lot of it is dependent on, on the business models. But right now, I think you can fly into Toronto, and then from Toronto, you can connect into, uh, into India from there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it has opened up. So we're not just dependent on the Vancouver route. Um, but yeah, ultimately, we would love to be able to take a look at that. And I think that's kind of in the long-range plans. Mm-hmm. And um, yep. And you are chair of uh, police board also. City of Surrey is going through a lot now between RCMP and Surrey Police Services. You have municipal police there, very decorated police. They controlled uh, very nicely the gangism there started from there and now it is very uh, safe and how many officers total you have in your force and what is the uh, situation of law and order in total well abbotsford is um i would venture to say at this point the data shows from 2022 that we're the safest city in the lower mainland yes um i think there's one stat which was property crime uh, that I think Maple Ridge was a half a percentage mm-hmm. lower. Um, but on all of the other fronts, we are um, basically the, the safest city in the lower mainland. Mm-hmm. Our goal is to make B- Abbotsford the safest city in B.C., if mm-hmm. not the country. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so, and uh, our chief seer has done a, a great job. The, the forest, we're very proud of Abbey PD. Mm-hmm. They've, um, yeah, they've kept a... a you know, again, we have to always be vigilant because there's always, mm. always things going on um, mm. that could erupt at any time. And mm. so, um, you know, some of this, the the uh, working uh, in the schools, uh, working in community, uh, you know, our our goal is to make Abbotsford the safest city in BC. But the other motto that they use internally is strength in community, and it really does show. I, they're very involved in the community. They um, 
you know, the way they have worked with um, some of the homeless challenges and some of the other issues uh, with mental health issues, uh, domestic violence, um, mm-hmm. they have been, um, yeah, we're very proud of the work that they've done there. Yes. Uh, when I announced that uh, Mayor Siemens is coming and uh, I got a question on my uh, phone that last night someone reported to police for the very loud music till midnight, but police didn't show up because they have their priorities. And uh, why don't uh, you empower your bylaw officers so they can intervene that sort of situation and give tickets who is doing to the midnight loud music there? I know big parties are going on. So um, that, that, that is one concern that they wanted me to pass out to you. Okay. No, I appreciate that, and we will. Uh, I'll do a follow up on that. I know we do have a noise bylaw where mm-hmm. the bylaws officers can do a uh, a decibel read, and um, the, one of the challenges that we have in Abbotsford is mm-hmm. that we are the largest geographic municipality in the province. Yes. And so, um, even though we do have bylaws officers that are working seven days a week, mm-hmm. um, you know, to cover that area and especially after hours um yeah there there's some challenges there with staffing um just the, the sheer amount of money that that would cost so um but yeah I, if um if somebody has a concern um please just uh they can send a, uh, an email into the uh into the city and we will definitely do a follow up on that mr mayor as we are opening after covid this year lots going on in your city and cover the tournaments called Sade Parade and we will be participating in uh, Canada Day Parade and so many uh, big music concerts in your uh, arena there. A beautiful city, beautiful people every day. I encourage and say on air, Abbotsford is one of the best city. You know, whenever I got very good friends there living, Dave Sidhu is one of that, and you also there. And thank you again for joining us. And on short notice, please do visit once in a while after a month or two months, and uh, we should share our thoughts, your thoughts, and pass out to all our listeners. Thank you again for your time. Any, any message at last? Um, no, just to continue to, to come and visit Abbotsford, invest in Abbotsford, and I think you will find a very welcoming, inclusive city. We, we are the cultural hub of the Fraser Valley. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a lot going on here, and uh, just come and enjoy. And, um, yeah, it's a great place to live, work, and play. Thank you so much. Uh, thank Mayor. you. Appreciate Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.